Hey there everyone, Laurel here. Today I have a long video. It's actually condensed down from like an hour. I started playing with the We Are Memory Keepers embossing folders. I've got a lot of the next generation embossing folders. I've never used them. I've hoarded them for a long time and never used them. Here's a snippet of the four cards I'm going to make in the video today. Now the next generation designs, man, those really pop up off the page. They are cool, I gotta say. They're six by six designs. Here's a look at them. They come in a pack of two. They're ten dollars, but you get two designs in each pack. Now the one over here to the right that I'm about to lay down, that's the only one that is not a next generation design. It's just one of their regular embossing folders. But we're going to use all of these today. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and create the backgrounds on each of the cards that we're going to use before we run them through the embossing machine. So the first, I'm going to use some Distress Ink, of course. <laughs> so what I did was smush down some picked raspberry, which is the pink, and squeezed lemonade, which is the yellow onto my craft surface there and spritzed some water in there. And now I'm just taking my watercolored cardstock and just dunking it into the colors. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much all I'm doing. I am setting these aside and letting them dry naturally. As I'm, Since I'm making four cards, um, they've got plenty of time to dry. Because <laughs> this is, like I said, this took me um, a couple hours to do total uh, for no reason other than I'm completely crazy and it, I just kept messing up. But anyway, okay, so my second background, I'm going to use my color burst. You see my little shoe box here I use for all of my color bursts. The two colors I'm going to use are turquoise and or orchid. The turquoise is obviously this color, and then the orchid is a purple. Now, I didn't mean to put so much down. Um, these are called, I, I call them the powders with power. A little goes a long way, so keep that in mind uh, when you're using the Color Bursts by Ken Oliver. These babies are going to outlive you. These little bottles, you're never going to run out of them, ever. Ever. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone and set that off to the side. Now this one I'm going to do is the Koi Sketchbox. This is my first little watercolor palette I ever bought. Isn't it cute? Now the squares are a little little, a little little, <laughs> or small, um, but this is a great little portable uh, watercolor set here. I ended up investing in the Gonzai uh, tablet, and I use that a lot more. You get a lot more colors, and the pans are bigger, but this is a great uh, portable tablet. It's great to use. I've got no complaints over it. I'm just using one color, and I'm creating an ombre look. Again, all of the cardstock I'm using is watercolored cardstock today, and again, this is the Koi sketch box here. All right, so now this is the last background I'm going to be doing. I'm going to use Peerless watercolors this time. So again, I'm going to spray my watercolor cardstock with the water, and I'm just going to go in with one color this time. I'm just kind of dabbing it on here or there, leaving a little bit of white space. I didn't know how it was going to look. You know, again, every time I just sit down and start playing, I have absolutely no plan, and I've never played with these embossing folders before. So I didn't know how any of this was going to turn out, and I'll be honest, two designs got cut from the video and found their way into the trash can. It just is what it is, you know? All right, now it's time to work, uh, actually do use the embossing folders here. Now, it took me a minute to figure out the sandwich. I'm using the cuddle bug here. All right, so I was playing with the, uh, with the, the, the sandwich and trying to figure out what works, and I finally figured it out. But look at those raised hearts. See how popped up off they are off the page? I mean, they are, like, going to come out and hit you on the screen, like, seriously. The hearts and a dots is a set, and it's called dotted. So that's what the hearts came in. Remember, the embossing folders, they come in pack of two, so you get two designs with one pack. But the sandwich that worked for me is the A plate and the C plate. That's all I used. I did not use the B plates at all. Now, um, with the hearts, that's all I had to use was the A plate and C plate, as you see here. But with this next design, which is part of the bouquet set, there are two little floral images here, um, I ended up having to add a shim. And I guess it's because the design, the floral design was so detailed, um, the A plate and the C plate just wasn't enough. But I couldn't put in the two B plates because then it wouldn't go through my machine. So again, I just played around a little bit until I figured out what worked. As I'm pumping it through here, I'm realizing... I don't think this this is embossing, <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> so that's when I decided to go in and add the shim, and then it was perfect. Now, again, this is the color burst panel that I'm working off of here. So when I realized it didn't really give that great of an impression, I'm going to grab my little shim. If you don't have a shim, you can add a couple pieces of cardstock in its place and, and run it through. So then I'm just going to go ahead and man, this is Cuddle Bug is the first thing I ever bought as far as a die cutting machine. I actually got it off of eBay. I remember I paid 50 bucks for it. I thought I was so proud uh, back in the day. This is the first model. They have a totally different model. 
uh, but anyway but when you lift it up you can see the design and that's a busy background and we're going to tone that down in, in just a minute but ah uh, these things are unbelievable and I can't believe that I've hoarded them for this long and never ever used them and even the back side I mean you get two you can use whatever side you know fancies you whatever floats your boat you know what I mean now this design was part of the bouquet stamp set so this is the other one that comes in the set and this was the peerless watercolors and I thought that turned out pretty you know I didn't know shoot <laughs> All right, so what's next? What do we got here? Okay, this is the striped one. This is actually the stripes. This is their regular embossing folders. So um, now this one, I had to use the shim as well. So you just got to kind of play around with whatever machine you have. Or actually, I'm sorry, I don't use the shim. The shim wouldn't go through. So I guess the regular embossing folders are thicker. I don't know. I don't know. These are all mysteries. Look, I'm putting in the B plate. So with this one, with the regular embossing folder, I've got the uh, base plate and it's sandwiched in between two B plates. You know what I'm saying? You just got to play around. And then I've got this really cool striped background. And that was the distress ink panel there. All right, so all my embossing is done. I can put my little cuddle bug away. So here's the background with the color bursts. And it's really hard to pick up that design from the embossing folder. So I'm taking the Picket Fence Distress Ink Pad. Can I tell you how happy I was when he finally released the Picket Fence color in a Distress Ink Pad? Hello. And because those images are so raised off the page with these next generation embossing folders, it was very easy to just take my pad and wipe it over the top. And now I've got a whitewash over that uh, that embossed image. You'll see that in a second. I've set that off to the side to dry. Now we're back here on the hearts, and I decided to add a little wash of gesso. Why? I don't know. I probably could have done the uh, picket fence distress ink pad too, but why use the same product when I can use something different, I guess, is what I was thinking. I don't know. So anyway, I put some gesso down. I did spray it a little bit with water, and I dabbed some parts up here and there with the rag here. I'm going to set that off to the side to dry, and that's pretty much what I did. I would set these things off to the side, let them dry, and then look at them and see if I like them. <laughs> now, this one is the Distress Ink panel, so I put some water droplets on there. I let it sit for maybe 30 seconds or so, and then I dabbed it away with the cloth. And look, you've got these water droplets. They're so cool. So here are all four designs ready to go and be turned into cards. They're saying, make me into a card, make me into a card, so I'm going to. Now, this one, I ran this through the die cutting machine. This is the uh, Avery L. Burst die cut. Now, when you run it through your die cutting machine, it is going to kind of mush down some of those embossed images. So those hearts aren't poofed up as much as they were before. So keep that in mind if you do any die cutting with these next generation designs. Now, this is some double-sided deco foil. It's like, uh, it's like foam with, with adhesive on the front and the back. So I ran this through, uh, I've got a love and a you die, random dies, I think they're from Ellen Hudson, and I die cut those two words here. I'm not even going to use the U, so you can just ignore the U. Pretend like the U is not there. The U is not there, all right? <laughs> so what you do with this foil is you can, or this deco foil product is you can foil without having to use a laminator, mink machine, or die cutting machine. So I was like, okay, let's go ahead and use this. But before I do that, I'm adding some candied apple distress ink. I didn't even know I had this color. I'll be honest, I don't even remember buying it. I mean, what does that say about me? So I ran around the edges with some of that candied apple. I'm moving on. And uh, I'm going to pop up that little middle circle there. Again, that's the Avery L Burst die. Pop that up with some foam dimension. So this, going back over here to the dies that we ran through the die cutting machine. Uh, it's got some double-sided uh, tape, or so adhesive, on each side with a liner paper. So what I'm going to do, it's nice because you can take the liner paper off the back side and you can stick it right down to on, onto your project there. So you don't have to worry about getting any glue and adhering it down. So that's a nice feature. But it also has a liner on the top, so I peeled off the liner off the top. This is some red foil. I'm placing it over the top, shiny side up. You want this pretty side looking at you. And then I'm just going to mush that down. Use a bone folder, use your fingers, whatever you want to do. I just want to make sure that foil is sticking, uh, you know, to the die cut here. And then when you peel up the foil, bam, you have your foil die cut. So no mink machine, laminate, or nothing like that is needed. It sticks to the sticky stuff. <laughs> so here's a look at that finished card. All right, moving on to the third card here. Uh, this one uses one of the images from the bouquet set. 
embossing folders here. So I went ahead and cut apart that panel there at the diagonal. I just basically put it in my trimmer and cut it from corner to corner. And I've got my Misty here to play around with the placement of the cinnamon. I had this idea that I wanted the sentiment in between these two images and I wanted to pop up the images. Now this is a stamp set called Sassy Smiles from Casual Friday. It's cool. It's super cute. I like it. And I'm going to go ahead and just figure out where I want that to be. I'm using my mini Misty, by the way. I'm going to ink that up with some white pigment ink from the 10 stamps. I'm using the pigment ink because I want to go ahead and heat emboss this. And that pigment ink stays wet longer, so I'm able to. I am using a super fine uh, white embossing powder. I want to make sure that uh, all the details of the words and the script of the words don't get lost with the embossing powder. So I find uh, using the super fine embossing powder with the sentiments is, is the way to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. Bam! I'm going to pop up these little uh, diagonal things here that we've cut out with some double-sided foam tape. I love this stuff. This is that scotch roll that's like huge, bigger than my head huge. It's awesome. Lasts a long time, a really long time, I got to say. All right, so I'm just going to pop that down there. Any excess that's hanging off the sides, I'm just going to hack off with my scissors here when I'm done. So with this panel, I decided to put this, the tape directly on the card base. It was just easier for me. Don't know why, whatever. And then I'll peel, you know, flip off the, the lining paper here and adhere that down. And again, I'll grab my scissors and cut off any of the, look at these scissors. These are like a weapon. <laughs> these are some big scissors. Whew. All right, so that's this card. Now, you know me, I don't do sequins on camera because I'm not real good at them. So I did adhere some green sequins from the ton. Don't know if they're right. I didn't do my visual triangles or whatever, uh, but there it is. All right, so this card, I didn't get on video. I have no idea what happened. I don't know. But, um, you know, I don't know. I'm baffled by what happened. But I basically uh, adhered the, the panel to a card base. Now that hello is foiled. We, I did it the exact same way as I did with the Red Love. I used that Deco Foil product. I put this, this foil is Opal, I think it's called, uh, from ThermoWeb. It's super pretty and shiny. And I adhered it down with the hello die cut that I had in my stash. And that's this card. But look at the white, how it pops off that background. Look at that design. And I was so worried about the color burst because I put so much color down, but I think this turned out fantastic. Now here's the, the last card, and this might be my favorite of the four. That little vellum butterfly is like, hello. This is some paper I found over at Ellen Hudson. I think I was perusing through their clearance section, like not, not even kidding. And I saw this and I was like, I wish I ordered more pieces of it. All of the supplies that I used, if they're still available, they're linked below in my YouTube description and also on my blog by the way. Now this is a butterfly die. I think it's from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I went ahead and die cut that awesome paper. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and hear this vellum, beautiful foiled rainbow butterfly of gorgeousness uh, to my card base there. That embossing folder again is the only regular embossing folder by We Are Memory Keepers. The rest were those next generation ones. I think it's so cool cool. All right. Now these are some sentiment stamps from the 10 stamps. They've got a little line of label stamps here. Let's mingle, I think is what it's called. Yeah, let's mingle. All right. I went ahead and inked that up with the tons black ink, and then I'll go ahead and cut them out and adhere that down onto my card. So it looks like that little Dymo label look, which I think is so cool. There wasn't much I had to do to this card. That, that background and that butterfly, done, done and done. You know what I'm saying? All right, so this the, I'm adhering these down with some multi-matte medium. That bottle is almost empty, but I love my multi-matte medium. So I'm going to squeeze every stinking bit of multi-matte medium I can get out of that bottle. I'm squeezing it out. I ain't wasting any of it. That stuff is awesome. It's super strong, and it dries completely clear. It's like invisible. And for messy people like me, where it oozes out all over the place, I need it. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now I'm happy. Well, no, I'm not. I'm still not happy. I'm going to ask some more glue. And I'm going to put this one. I remember I fiddled around with this a little bit because I wanted them to kind of be wonky. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to adhere this down. This is some, whatever, Tombow Monai multi-liquid glue or whatever. I used liquid glue so I could move the base around just a little bit. I knew I was going to have a hard time gluing this down. I just could feel it. I could feel I was going to have a crazy gluing down situation. So I went ahead and used the liquid glue because I could kind of finagle it around a little bit before it sets. And then I did some flick on some of that black textured spray that I love so much. This time I remembered to cover up my 
beautiful vellum butterfly and flicked on some of those back flex and that's it. Four totally different cards using the We Are Memory Keepers uh, embossing folders. So what do y'all think? They're cool, aren't they? Super cool. Well, I think they're cool. So anyway, that's it for today. This was an unusual video. It was kind of PC and choppy, and I, I did my best to try to explain what I, what I could. But these four cards took me all afternoon. Don't know. Maybe I needed some coffee or something. You know what I needed? I needed one of those Chick-fil-A uh, frosted coffees before I craft. That's probably what the problem was. I need to know that. I mean, I need to always get one of those. Have you had one of those Chick-fil-A frosted coffees? Holy moly. They are so good anyway. All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will catch you next time for the next video.